This gets too much water at times and must stand in water for hours, if not days, after a rain. Huge rain events, which we're having more and more of. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I've got to show you what I did about that on my land because this method of doing things is just not working well enough. So you're saying with draining your fields, putting drainage tiles in or? Yeah, no, I didn't put drainage tiles in. Just sloping the fields or? No, no, I got the soil to percolate and it just, it, the, the field soaked it up. I didn't have runoff. Okay, I thought you said you worked on your fields and got the drainage, but you were saying by I got the biology. drainage, yeah, but it, it drained into the soil. Sure, yeah, that's what we want. That way, when it got dry, then there was water down in there. Mm -hmm. So, it's, <laughs> you know, it's a problem. How do you conceive a system or build a system? There's your zinc deficiency. See how the tip of the, of the edge of the leaf didn't develop well enough? And the, the inside the leaf panel, you see a puckering. The leaf margin is too tight. And that's much more indicative of how zinc deficiency looks in squash. But it looks differently in different plants. Yes, yeah, see, there's your zinc deficiency. So that's not healthy enough. See, it, it, in that particular part, and this is where boron deficiency came in because if the transport channel didn't carry the nutrients out there, then the zinc didn't reach the edge of the leaf. I just happened to notice that that was a really good example of how zinc deficiency looks in squash. Zinc's not your worst deficiency out here, but in, in fact, it may be one of your lesser deficiencies. I was really surprised how much like total uh, copper you've got in there, but this one here would give you a sign of what it looks like when you're copper deficient. Phosphorus doesn't work without copper, simply doesn't work. Copper is necessary to conduct the electron to and away from the phosphorus so that it is adenosine diphosphate becomes adenosine triphosphate and carries the energy away from the chlorophyll. So what that color is, is burned up chlorophyll. The chlor chlorophyll burns up and it's that wine red color. So the phosphorus wasn't working to carry the energy away from the chlorophyll, which is why the chlorophyll burned up. Is that true of all metals, um, metallic minerals in soil, that they're conductors for the energy or just? They're conductors of energy, yes. But it's more like they, you know when you hit a bell, how it rings? If you hit that bell and you had another bell of the same dimensions and you ring this bell, that bell will also ring with you didn't touch it. But it'll also, and so that resonance carries a lot further than the element itself. So it'll make all the other elements around it vibrate. So you sort of reach a critical mass when they start working. And in this particular spot, on these particular grasses right here, then it didn't get its copper. But all around it, it's getting its copper pretty good. In cold weather, copper works a hundredth as well as it does in hot weather. So in the middle of winter, here's copper is only working a hundredth as well as it does in June or July here. And so you see a lot of that in the winter, then it means your copper's not working. And that doesn't mean that the copper isn't there, it just means it's not working. You got copper in your soils. I'm, I was surprised how much in the total tests and in the soluble, much, much more than most fields. But now, is that a natural phenomena or do you think that that's potentially been added 
They sprayed copper sulfate on these fields weekly. Copper sulfate, it's, yeah. Yeah, they might have sprayed it, yeah. Because if they were doing anything like growing tomatoes well, or yeah, they, tomatoes and peppers, and they sprayed it weekly. tomatoes and peppers, then that's probably why you got the, so much copper. I, I wondered about that because it's an unusual reserve of copper in the soil here. Doesn't mean copper's working. <laughs> in this case, it wasn't, but it's, uh, you've got plenty here. And this is true of most of your like metallic uh, trace elements, like zinc, manganese, iron, they all have a certain thing that they do with energy. And, uh, each one of them has a different task. So phosphorus is an anion that has these different cofactors like iron and manganese and zinc and copper. And it probably has other cofactors, but they, they're such minor importance that we don't know enough about them. But it's, uh, copper's the only one that causes complete failure of phosphorus. It just, the phosphorus just then doesn't connect with anything. It has to have that copper there to have the right connection so that it picks up the electron or gives it off. What would tie up the copper in, that, in the situation of that grass there? I'm just wondering because there's some failure in the soil biology there. There's something going on there that's interfering with the availability of copper. And it could be residual Roundup. In the case of zinc and manganese, it probably is residual Roundup. Almost surely the Roundup is still tying up those elements 10 years after it was applied. But copper, I'm not familiar with Roundup tying up copper so much. So if it was copper that got tied up by Roundup, I don't know. Might have been tied up by something else. Could it be tied up if the bacterial ratio is too high? Could be. Uh, this is why you want to get that really diverse, very rich soil food web, because then balance is so easy. And balance is, it's, it's about 95% of the success that we get. You we can't go too far out of balance without it costing you. We know that our soils are too, that the bacterial to fungal ratio is too high. Too much bacteria, not enough fungi. So the nutrients potentially, I know with some can be tied up, particularly phosphorus within the bodies of the living bacteria and they must be consumed in order to be released. Is that your approach as well? Yes, but when you've got really good protozoal activity in your soil, this is the soil's animals, and they munch through the soil food web, and they particularly like to hang out around the roots of plants. And that's the nutrient delivery system for the plants because the fungi and the bacteria, they're using those nutrients. And so they don't just get close to the plant's roots and the plant says, I'm hungry, and they just disperse their cell wall and give their protoplasm to the plant. They don't do that. They rely on protozoa to come along and eat them and digest them and excrete their nutrients and the plant then takes it up and it's got freshly digested nutrients that are in the closest thing to a biological condition. We put them on as salts and if we put very much on the saltiness just it's, it's a preservative. It isn't a nutrient. <laughs> okay we're gonna have to break right there. We got a book to the other farm because we're running out of time. Now we're waiting on that soil test. We're still and what was that soil test for number four? Or number was... four. Well, we should spend some time <clears throat> and look at those soil tests as a group and look at, you, you've got to have uh, an approach that you can build soil. Your approach here isn't building soil well enough. 
even though we're we got good carbon. Spent four years growing nothing but multi-species cover crops out here. We got good carbon, but we got no low biology, huh? It hasn't. It hasn't made this productive. And I think I could give you some recommendations that you could adapt to your operation here that might accomplish your aims better. That'd be great. One of the things I think might be lacking here is controlled traffic. Controlled what? Controlled traffic. Of the equipment? Or what do you think? Yeah, well, when you go through the field with any tractor or implement or anything, or just people walking, uh, it's not clear that you only walk on certain strips. Well, we have laneways, but they're, you know, everything's can't cover the weeds, so yeah, it's not clear. It looked to me like those laneways may change. Like in this field here, the yellow one, yeah. where would the laneways we be? We don't have any laneways in there. You know, we were okay. drilling and... Well, I can we see, I like can it. see that there were ripper uh, lanes down well, through here. And there's actually winter squash here. Yeah, yeah. So in those ripper lanes, that's the winter squash. Which is doing way better further out. Yeah, <laughs> but the... Yeah, it's not doing well enough. It's doing really well out further out. That's unfortunate. And people need to eat food like this. So come on, you got to produce it. Yeah, yeah, well, that's why you're here. Show us what we need to do. We're working on it hard. There's mo much more demand in organic agriculture than there is expertise in production. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure you've seen that, oh, you yeah. know? Yeah. And when I go and I buy, look, Ingalls, of all the supermarkets I've visited in, in the United States, Ingalls is one of the top supermarkets. Has more selection of things organic, certified, etc., than just about any other store, Publix or Kroger's or Safeway or Albertsons or whatever. They, then none of them seem to measure up to Ingalls. It's great. It's your local supermarket. Yeah, it's great. It's the, what a great supermarket. Wow. It started out on his truck selling produce, so it grew out of a local move, and I think they ought to cover more local produce there, yeah. but they do pretty good. Yeah, Ingalls is, is my pick of the supermarket crowd. Not that I would prefer to get my food out of supermarkets, but just that it's where it is. Yeah. And, uh, if I buy anything organic, man, I have to be a discerning buyer. It's caveat emptor. You know? Let the buyer beware. Yeah, especially if it's organic from overseas. Well, especially if it's organic from, <laughs> you know, from domestic sources too. The organic quality is all over the shop. Once in a while I find something that is truly superb, but a lot of the time it's as bad uh, as, if not worse than, the conventional. Much more nitrates. An organic potato, I just never have found good ones in the store. store. It's, it's hopeless almost. If I want a really good organic potato, I have to grow it.